welcome to our Holy Communion in this, the third week of the season of Epiphany. The Lord be with you and also with you. As we begin our worship today, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon me, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like the loud peals of thunder, shouting, Alleluia! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb, and added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said to me, Do not do it. I am fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the first verse of the second chapter, hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. 
Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our readings today, we hear about weddings. In Revelation, of course, is the marriage supper of the Lamb, and in the Gospel, it's the turning of water into wine uh, to the wedding in Cana. Miracles are wonderful events, and of course the turning of water into wine was the first miracle that St John records in his Gospel. And we see in each miracle a sign of the Kingdom of Heaven and the Kingship of Christ. The first miracle is that joyous occasion of a wedding. For the people who lived in Cana, Weddings were usually held on a Wednesday evening. The couple would wear wedding robes and crowns on their heads. They would be treated like a king and a queen. This might be the greatest celebration of their life. They would be led home by torchbearers, filling the street with light. A canopy would be carried over their heads, just like royalty. They wouldn't go away on the honeymoon, but would have open house and a party that would last for a week. That would take a lot of planning. There would be lots of guests, and they would all wash their hands and their feet when they came to the house. There were large water jars outside for this purpose. Jesus' mother and disciples were at the party. It's thought that the bride and groom might have been a relative of Jesus, Cana was near Nazareth, where Jesus lived. They were singing and dancing, and they were all enjoying themselves. Suddenly, Mary says to Jesus, they have no wine. The party wasn't meant to end, but of course, without wine, it would soon be over. The bride and groom would be embarrassed, for they had run out of resources. Jesus looked at the six big water jars that had been used for washing. Each held between 20 and 30 gallons. He says to the servants, fill the water pots, and they fill them right to the top. Now, Jesus says, take some to the steward who is in charge. And they obey Jesus again. When the steward tastes the water, it has become wine. And he calls the bridegroom and says, Everyone serves good wine first, but you have kept the best until now. He did not know of the miracle, only the servants knew. You can imagine the surprise of the groom. The party could go on, and people could enjoy themselves. In this miracle, we see abundance. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. In his Gospel, John tells stories of Jesus meeting needs, of losses and of well-being. 
giving abundance through his abundant love. And this abundant life and love is for every generation, including ours, of course. May we always remember to seek Jesus' help both for ourselves and for others, as Mary did at that wedding. For Jesus' love, as we see in this story, is abundant. It is very generous. At all times, we only have to ask. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundance of your love. We pray for your church all across our world. May your people, in all they do, act in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundance of your love and as we pray for the needs of the world, we think of those parts of our world where for many reasons people feel unloved and uncared for. And we pray that that might change. We pray that people will feel and know your peace and your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we think of the abundance of your love, particularly as shown at the wedding in Cana at Galilee, we pray for all our relationships. We pray for all those hoping and planning to get married in the coming year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we think of your abundant love, we thank you for your gift of healing. And we pray for all who are troubled today in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those in hospital, those in hospices or ill at home for your healing peace and your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your abundant love, a love which promises not just life here and now, but life with you in eternity. We remember those who have died, May they indeed rest in your peace and rise in your glory and know your perpetual light ever shining on them. May all those who mourn know your comfort and your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, for we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom we have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh 
as your son born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim his great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this as sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Martin, St. Christopher, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, spare of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. In your hearts and your spirits receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Body of Christ shed for you. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and for ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.